This primer is written for engineers and naval architects of the merchant marine. However, it is hoped that it will provide some preliminary instruction to draftsmen and other apprentices who work in shipyards and other ship design centers. As indicated by the title this video series forms a primer, accordingly, the individual must develop his slash her proficiency by engaging in the several activities required in the many fields of marine endeavor. In this video we shall look at the effect of longitudinal bending with the ship in adverse weather. We shall also look at racking, water pressure and strains upon docking, including panting and pounding. Before we start looking at the configuration of the diverse ship sections it is important to consider the forces that act on the ship's hull because it is the magnitude of these forces which dictates the construction and the specification of the members that make up her framing and her plating. Whilst at sea, with the vessel pitching and rolling the straining forces are even greater especially when one considers the different combinations of the static and dynamic forces that affect a ship's hull, as well as her other parts. Essentially the ship designer will have to find ways to incorporate materials that are light and strong. Incorporating such materials will enable the hull to resist change and become an efficient carrier of a great number of different goods across the seas. Equally, the ship designer must keep in mind that the owner of the ship will require her to be reliable and capable of operating in all types of weather. Most importantly the owner will require that her ratio of cargo capacity to her displacement must be of a high value. Finally, the engines must be capable to propel her at an optimal fuel consumption. Next, we shall look upon longitudinal bending whilst in adverse weather conditions and waves. When the vessel is at sea, in adverse weather conditions, she will be subject to increased straining, especially when she meets a wave of the same length as herself. Here we shall assume that the ship rests on a wave equal to her own length the height of which is equal to 1 20th of her length. There will be two cases to consider. Case number one is that when the ship rests with her amidships at the crest of the wave. Case number two is that when the ship rests with her amidships at the trough of the wave. Stresses on account of sagging are, in most cases, lesser than those stresses produced by hogging. The longitudinal strength of a ship is contributed by the following parts of her structure. 1. Primarily the keel structure, followed by the rest of the bottom plating. 2. The inner bottom plating. 3. The deck stringer plating. The shear strake. The deck girder. 4. The side plating, which makes up the web of the ship's girder. In order to clarify the ship's girder, which has been mentioned above, I would refer the reader to the following schematic of a ship's body plan. Racking or transverse straining action. Racking is a deformation that takes place in a transverse plane. The parts of the ship that contribute towards resistance to racking are her bulkheads and her web frames. These strength members do an excellent job in, more or less, eliminating racking. Having mentioned racking one has to mention this effect on today's containers where racking can cause considerable deformations especially when a ship rolls in heavy weather. The arrows indicate the major forces that act on the hull, in bad weather, and the deformed hull members are shown on the left of the upright view of the hull. Water pressure effect on ship's hull. When we consider a vessel at rest in calm conditions the water exerts pressure on the hull sides and bottom. Since pressure increases with depth the bottom of the hull experiences the highest force and pressure. 
the ship's frames, and double bottom floors satisfactorily resist this water pressure and they are assisted in doing so by the brackets provided, which connect the frames and the double bottom structure and to the weather deck and its beams. The robust construction of hopper tanks and topside tanks, as well as the bulkhead corrugated nature also assist the total ship's structure in adequately resisting the force exerted by the sea water. Stringers may also be incorporated in the sections where they are deemed to be necessary. Strains upon dry docking The photos attached here show ships in dry dock and how the center line blocks support the major portion of the ship's weight. The photos on the left hand side show the center line support of ships after parts. The photos on the right hand side show how the center line blocks support the major part of weight of the ships at their forward end. Once a ship has been trading for a number of years she must be placed in dry dock in order to 1. Remove barnacles that have accumulated on the underwater part of her hull. 2. Have her hull cleaned and painted. 3. Have any damaged areas of her hull repaired in accordance with class recommendations. Four. Have her propellers, tail shafts, rudders, and thrusters inspected by owners and class. 5. Have her anchors and cables inspected. Sometimes ships have to enter dry dock because of an accident too. One of the important points that must be observed at the time the ship enters dry dock is her stability as the water is drained from the dock and the ship's hull is about to touch the center line blocks at her after end. Ballast must be suitably arranged so that the ship has a small trim aft, but no list. No free surface should exist in the ship's tanks. Stability calculations should be made to ensure that adequate metacentric height GM exists to counter the rise of the center of gravity G, when the vessel touches the blocks. The dry dock should be provided with a dry dock plan, so that the blocks may be arranged to take the ship's bottom. All of the ship's tanks must be sounded before entering the dock and a note should be made of the quantities on board. Dry docking results in stresses on the hull. Bottom blocks should be placed in way of stringers and frames and intercostals. Stresses do occur as the dry dock is drained because of the lack of water pressure on the hull. Let us consider a cylindrical rod which is tested by stretching. Whilst the test is performed the rod elongates, but at the same time at some point along its length its cross section also changes. In fact the cross sectional area of the rod reduces. See the diagram on the left. This is a deformation that takes place in a plane that is perpendicular to the direction of the applied force, that makes the rod elongate. It is obvious that there is a force that acts along this plane. What follows is that a ship's girder is subjected to forces which produce bending. Such conditions introduce a situation in which there is a tendency to crush the ship's transverse section. As a result of these conditions it is obvious that the ship's transverse section must be built with sufficient strength in order to counteract the forces mentioned above. Panting and pounding Pounding When a ship is pitching, the bows often lift clear of the water and then slam down heavily onto the sea, subjecting the forepart to severe pounding. To compensate for this, 
the bottom is strengthened to 25% of her length aft of her forward perpendicular. To resist pounding, the forward bottom structure is strengthened for between 25% and 30% of the length, depending on the ship's block coefficient. Plate floors are fitted on each frame station, transverse framing, or alternate frame stations, longitudinal framing, with intercostal side girders not more than 2.2 meters apart. The four strakes of shell plating, either side of the keel, are generally increased in thickness in the pounding region. Pounding is also called slamming. Panting when the bow of the ship is immersed deep in the water the fore plating is subjected to considerable pressure. In direct sequence the bow is lifted clear and the pressure on the plating is relieved. Video number 2 in a series headed a primer on ship construction. Video number 3 is following shortly. To continue watching videos in this series please make sure that a Google search is made as follows. Videos will be listed in the correct sequence. Alternatively, please make a similar search in YouTube, where all videos will be saved. Thank you for your interest in the videos and in the subject they cover. Thank you for watching this video and for following this channel.